Plans and specifications are the key medium for expressing information in a construction project. As such, the ability to read and interpret this two-dimensional information and translate it into a three-dimensional built product is one of the largest tasks of a construction professional. To demonstrate how this works, we're going to go through the process that a framing carpenter would use to pull information from this set of plans and frame this section of wall, ultimately when completed, looking like the example you see here. Now, in order to complete this, we'll need information provided from both the architectural and the structural drawings. The architectural drawings are going to provide us information such as dimensions and wall locations, finished materials and the locations of such, while the structural drawings will give us sizes of beams, headers, and support columns, and attachment methods. So the first thing we need to, need to do is identify the overall length of our wall, which we have established as the section of wall being bookended by these two intersecting walls. With that, we can use this 13 foot 1 inch dimension, but we need to add the thickness of our two walls because this dimension is to the interior face. Our walls are constructed of 2x4s and 2x4s have a nominal thickness of 3.5 inches, so we add a total of 7 inches to get an overall wall length of 13 feet 8 inches. With that, we can go ahead and start the framework of our wall. Now, something that needs to be noted here is dimensions on plans are not always to the rough face of walls. Sometimes they're to the finished face, and typically there's a note on a drawing that clarifies that, so just be aware of that. Now what about features that will ultimately affect the framing makeup of our wall? could be windows, could be doors, or some other element that we haven't thought about. We can clearly see in our plan view we have some features in our wall, and it's likely windows or doors. If we go to our elevation view, we can clearly see that they are in fact windows. The elevation view will also give us a couple other key pieces of information. We need to know the vertical orientation within our wall of those windows, and over to the end here we can see that it gives us the, the height of our windows, and it also tells us our, ultimately our wall height because it gives us a ceiling height for the building. So with that information, we can now go back to our plan view and try to identify horizontal orientation within our wall as well as the size of those window openings. Now that information may not jump right out at you but it is defined here. What we have here is a tag that says 4062. That tells you that the window is 4 feet 0 inches wide by 6 feet 2 inches tall. Each one of the flanking windows are 2 feet 8 inches wide by 6 feet 2 inches tall. So now we know our window opening size, and by looking at this 4.5 inch dimension, we can clarify that there is a 4.5 inch space between each of the three windows. So what about or, uh, horizontal position within the wall? Well, this 6 foot 10 inch dimension tells us that our middle window, the center of our middle window, is 6 foot 10 inches from the outside corner of our intersecting walls. With that, we can look at the framework of the wall. Now that we have the opening sizes and positions, we need to look at the purpose. Since this is a load-bearing wall because it's an exterior support wall for the structure, ultimately the roof is going to be supported by these walls, we need to look at how it's going to be framed up around these openings. So the first thing that we see is our first note that is this 2, 2 by 10, with 2 SC EE. What does all that mean? Well, the first thing it means is that we have two support columns at each end of our header. So effectively, that's a doubled up 2 by 4. So with that information, we can go ahead and put in our king studs with our doubled up jack studs attached next to it, and that's ultimately going to support our header, which is identified as a double 2 by 10 running continuously across the opening. Rotating the wall around, we see that this header is comprised of two 2 by 10s sandwiched together with a piece of half inch thick oriented strand board between them. That material is to allow the header to be three and a half inches thick to match the width of the 2 by 4 framing in the wall. 
So now that, that we understand that better, let's go back to our plan and finish this thing up. The last thing that we see is some intermediate supports that are identified as three 2x4s sandwiched together to create a post for support across the run of the header. That's all there is to the framing of the openings, other than to f infill the various pieces, which we'll come back to in a minute. The last thing I want to point out here is this detail that's called out on sheet S2.3. What we see when we go to, to that sheet is that it identifies some particular attachment requirements for the exterior sheathing. Because the wall is so narrow between our outside corner and our first window opening, we have to do some extra attachment in order to beef up the structural component of the wall system there. So that's everything that we need to know from our structural drawings to finish up the wall framing. Now we can go back to our model and do some of the infill elements that we hadn't finished yet. With the information that we had earlier from our window size, we can go ahead and put in the window sills underneath our windows and then also go ahead and do the rest of the infill elements, the cripple studs and the intermediate support studs. One of the things that you might notice when looking at this is that the cripples are not evenly spaced across the openings. The reason for that is because not only do they support load transfer, but they also provide an attachment point for our exterior sheathing, which is also a structural element of the wall. So as we see here, when we put the sheathing on the wall, the joints of the sheathing line up perfectly on top of the center point of the cripples and our studs. So these aren't arbitrarily placed. There is a strategic point to their placement within the wall section. So make sure that you're paying attention to that. So that's all there is to it. The last thing that I want to point out here is the framework at the ends of our walls. You'll notice that these studs are not sandwiched together typically like the rest of our wall, and that's because they provide a dual purpose. One is the intersection of our point, point of our wall allows for a secondary attachment point. So when we zoom in on this, we see that we have the ability to attach our wall intersection to this stud, but it also provides an attachment point for our drywall when we do the interior finish process of our structure. So there you have it. That's all there is to using plans to create the framing of a wall section.